edition of Back Roads of Illinois. We were central Illinois agriculture source and in the Midwest alongside in central Illinois agriculture. We are glad you are here on Back Roads of Illinois. I visited with our good people in the Safe Creek program for yesterday. However, Illinois Corn Growers Association with Rancho Dane, she is opening of the Safe Creek program. However, we were seeing and understanding of the Greek model from this administration in Washington, D.C. Did you miss our conversation about the Greek program from yesterday? You can listen to our show from yesterday on YouTube channel and whenever you get your podcast. Otherwise, we still have some heat, but we don't have the humidity in central Illinois, however in Texas. They've got some flooding for the Gulf Coast of Texas and in Louisiana. We were going to be cooler on Sunday, sort of. We still see the 90s for next week. We were going to talking with Aaron Black from Charles City, Virginia on this show. Aaron is a paramedic in Charles City, and he is a farmer as well. Okay, this is your agricultural news and markets update minute on back roads of Illinois. Senator Marshall from Kansas, he wrote a letter to the president by stopping cook oil from China. China has fallen into soybean oil from Brazil. Their export to cook oil to U.S. The cattle on feed report from the Department of Agricultural. It's coming out for this afternoon. Cattle markets or reaction is nature to the cattle on feed. The Department of Agriculture announced to expand the ground to gain access to be grazing with the plot program with the ground from the Department of Agricultural. This time is for your commodity markets update minute on back roads of Illinois. Corn futures finished in up eight to nine cents. Soybean futures mm. finished in up seven to nine cents. Wheat futures finished in up two to three cents. Now that we are going to talk about the livestock market for today on this afternoon. Cattle futures finished in down two to three cents. Feeder cattle and down four to five cents per way. Lean hogs finished and down seven to eight cents. Texas crude oil finished and up two to three cents per barrel. Dow Jones finished and up two points. We were coming back with Aaron Black from Charles City, Virginia. Stay tuned on back roads of Illinois. I'm joining with Aaron Black from Charles City, Virginia. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, Caesar. Thank you for having me. Let's start with our conversation about your career and your farm operation in Virginia. Could you tell our audience about it in the Midwest? <laughs> Well, again, thank you so much for having me today. As I said, my name is Aaron Black. I'm a sixth generation farmer and the fourth to do so in Charles City County, Virginia. Um, well, my brother and I bought at our father's operation in 2008. At that time, the operation specialized in forage crops. So after the buyout, we made the decision to pivot back more uh, to more traditional grain crops, such as corn, wheat, and soybeans. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've become hyper-focused on the use of no-till cover crops, regenerative agricultural practices, and innovations. That's led us to some 
create some technology that we've had the good fortune of being able to partner with several different agencies uh, on some cover crop technology that we've invented. And that's very exciting work for us. Cool. You stuck with your family farm. Yes. Uh, so, as I said, we've been doing this. Uh, I'm the sixth generation, the fourth to do it here in Charles City, Virginia. Um, it's kind of a unique area to be a farmer in, but we're partnered with uh, my brother and I are partners in our operation. And we're fortunate to have uh, two other sets of our family that, that make up part of the farming community here in this county. Aaron, could you tell us about the importance of paramedics in rural areas in the U.S.? Yes, I'd love to. Uh, so for your audience, uh, a little bit more about my background. Uh, aside from farming, I've also been a nationally registered paramedic and a firefighter since 2003. Uh, growing up in a rural community, uh, there was only one ambulance available for two counties, and that left a pretty indelible mark on me. So during my senior year in high school, I started volunteering in a local fire department mm -hmm. in the rescue squad. Uh, currently, uh, one of the larger problems in the United States is the availability of qualified paramedics in urban and especially in rural communities. Um, there are a staggering number of rural communities that do not have availability at a time of crisis to emergency services. And paramedicine is critical to the survivability of out of hospital emergencies. And unfortunately, it's something that has gone uh, underfunded and critically short staffed in a lot of our communities. How is your area? You have to get medical vac or ambulance to go to big cities like in Richmond, Charlottesville, Washington, D.C. In our area, we are fortunate to have options for emergency medical care. Uh, urban sprawl, unfortunately, has eaten away at our farmland and caused a lot of acres to become lost. However, that same urban sprawl has provided better access to emergency health services. Um, we're fortunate for general medical emergencies. There's several emergency rooms within a 30 minute drive or so, uh, but for more complex traumatic injuries, helicopter EMS uh, may be required to reach the larger specialty centers that are located in Washington, D.C., Richmond, Charlottesville, or Virginia Beach. Our area is part of the hospital in Peoria and Bloomington, not Chicago. Most rural communities in America face difficulty in getting to definitive care centers, um, the lack of local care and the need for better emergency medicine is of crucial importance in rural America right now. How is the corn and beans cotton and down there? Well, we started the year looking okay. Um, we had plenty of rain. <laughs> for the first six weeks of the growing season. Um, but in our immediate area, uh, if we're not irrigated, it's tough right now. It has gotten extremely dry in the last three weeks, and we've got some early corn that's going in a tassel and doesn't really look the best in the world. If we don't get substantial rainfall in the next week or so, we're – going to be hurting very badly. Cotton kind of got off to a wet start around here. There's a lot of areas of damage and drowned out because uh, it had some cooler temperatures it didn't really like. Soybeans are still okay. They're holding on right now, but the the corn is, is taking it on the chin pretty badly right now. 
How about in the hurricane season for you guys in Virginia? Hurricane season can be rough. There's definitely a push when corn starts getting ready to hurry up and get that corn out of the field. Um, a lot of your listeners in the Midwest may have to deal with derechos and wind events during the growing season um, where they may worry about green snap and it's not that big a deal for us here. But our hurricane season starts when we start harvesting corn. So a bad East Coast hurricane season will put all mature corn flat on the ground and, and make harvest incredibly hard. Yes, that's right. It will be bad. We were talking with Aaron Black from Charles City, Virginia. I will ask you this. Had meet with David Hool in Charles City. Yes. Uh, with only nine farming families uh, in the county, it's kind of hard to be multi-generational and grow up here and not mm -hmm. know David or know who David is. Um, it's been really neat to see over the last 10 years that people all of a sudden recognize our county. And every time I fought, talk to a farmer uh, and I tell them where I'm from, they say, oh, do you know David Hewa? Uh, so uh, it kind of put us on the map in that way. And it, we need to have that resource. Yeah, Is there uh, anything it, would you like to go to tell our listeners about rural health? Aaron. Yes, I. if I had one message to convey, um, I would ask everyone in a rural community, especially farmers, take the time in the off season, find a first aid class, have a stop the bleed kit um, or some <laughs> way to take care of yourself in the event you're in one of those communities where medical emergency services takes a long time to get there. Um, ask questions about the availability and capability of your local EMS services. And if you find a shortcoming, press your local leaders to bolster the strength of local emergency services. Do you have any final thoughts about these commodity prices and rural health, Aaron? Well, as far as commodity prices are concerned, um, our prices are so intertwined with uh, global happenings right now. You can turn on the news every morning and, and hear speculation and, uh, you know, try to navigate through it. Um, but you know, pre-planning, pre-marketing, and paying attention to global economic drivers is about the best thing we can do because otherwise we're at the mercy of what global commodity traders have to deal for us. Right. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Caesar. This is Aaron Black from Charles City, Virginia on back roads of Illinois. We were coming back with Caesar Cornell. Welcome back to Back Roads of Illinois. This is Caesar Corner on Back Roads of Illinois. We've been down for this commodity markets with the corn complex. It has been pretty warm and dry. 
However, I am seeing the corn market is starting off to run direction to the markets, especially since 2013 and 2015. But no matter what does the farmers about their responses to this markets, we will still see declining commodity. Thanks to Aaron Black from Charles City, Virginia. Well, folk, there are a show for today on Back Roads of Illinois for Back Roads of Illinois. I am Caesar Delgado.